500 may still be going with no cars left. Hi, I'm Nicole. He's Randy. Wake up. Yeah, time to get up on SportsCenter AM. It's amazing what can happen when one team in an all-star game decides to play defense. What is that? Even if it's only for a quarter, we had a little bit at the NBA all-star game. Let's get down Carolina way and show you what we're talking about. The city put on a great show. The vibe in the building was strong. And the offensive game was strong. And we're going to start with that. Giannis Antetokounmpo coming in transition here. You got him beat on the floor. And you got that alley-oop that Giannis throws down. That is 14 feet of human dunking a basketball. <laughs> I mean, some replays, the ball disappears through the top of the camera angle. Giannis gets up there and throws it down. He had... 38 points is the most by a foreign-born player in All-Star Game history. Speaking of some history, how about Dwayne Wade, Dirk Nowitzki? Jersey swap, framed jerseys given to them by their teammates. Dirk only played three minutes and 59 seconds, but man, you leave him open, he can still do that. He may move around like a like a folding chair, but he can still knock down a three. Three for three from three for nine points. Team Giannis led Team LeBron by 13 at the break. Team LeBron actually trailed by as many as 20. And there is the connection. The last time LeBron and D. Wade would be teammates. I'm going to enjoy it. You know, my only goal all star weekend is to try to play LeBron one lob. That's what everybody want to see me outside of that. That's it. His one goal is to throw LeBron one lob, and here it comes, third quarter. I, man, we saw that for a few great years in Miami. That's another angle to look at this thing. And listen, in the second half, Team LeBron outscored Team Giannis 96 to 69. At one point in the third quarter, Team LeBron had just a 3.2% chance of winning. Yeah, we're doing win prob in the All-Star game. Clay Thompson knocking down Steph Curry. Clay, what happened there? The guy's a terrible sport. He was taunting me. He was uh, rubbing my face. It might have been a foul. I got his wrist a little bit. He sold it. He flopped a little bit, but he's good at that. He's got a lot of games from shit. <laughs> oh, God. Or your teammates going at each other, and Clay's delivery is perfect. Kevin Durant can knock down a three. Speaking of Warriors, Team LeBron made and took a record number of threes. There's a combined 62 made three-pointers in this game. That's James Harden kicking to his former Thunder teammate Durant. Another three. 31 points for him. He's the All-Star Game MVP. First Warriors player to do it since 1967. But back to D. Wade in the memorable night. I got the moments I wanted. You know, it's like this whole weekend has been that way. You know, you visualize something and uh, you hope it go that way. And uh, it definitely has, you know, went way beyond uh, what I thought. But, you know, to have the moments that I visualize, uh, that's all I needed. Put me on the floor, I love to compete. I'm a competitor no matter what it is. Um, you know, I was competing to see if I can get to this table first. Uh, did anybody come here before me? No. See what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's all sweet to me. I mean, uh, it's hard to rank, you know, everything is special. Uh, but it's cool to uh, be out there with some of the best players that ever played a game and um, to win an MVP in front of my family and friends is uh, pretty sweet. So I just try to keep racking them up, I guess. Kevin Durant is going to need more fireplaces in his home so he can have more mantles because he has a lot of trophies, is, is, is my point. Second All-Star Game MVP, the sixth player in NBA history to win multiple finals and All-Star Game MVPs. Durant also the second player, second ever, to win the All-Star Game MVP with multiple teams. He joins. During LeBron's eight-year stretch of consecutive finals appearances, his teams have always entered the break well over 500. That's just not the case this season. The Lakers are 28 and 29. You'd have to go back to LeBron's rookie season to find the last time one of his teams were under 500 this late into the season. With that, we say a good morning, Greeny. Good morning. Yeah, guys, you are right. It has been a season filled with injuries and drama for the L.A. Lakers, and it has led many to ask, is last night's win at the All-Star Game going to wind up being the last highlight of LeBron James' season? LeBron's teams have reached the playoffs in 13 consecutive seasons, but that streak is now in serious jeopardy. Looking, of course, for LeBron. Instead, it goes to Ingram, and it's knocked away. Rondo fed Ingram, not LeBron. Atlanta closes out the win, 117 to 113. 
How bad do you want it? They let the Hawks go off on them. This cannot happen if you're fighting to make the playoffs. The Lakers are a game under 500 at the All-Star break, something LeBron has not experienced since he was a rookie. So you either make it or don't make it. That's when you worry about it. And the second half does not get any easier. BPI says the Lakers have the toughest remaining schedule of any team outside the current playoff picture. Our model gives them just a 6% chance to reach the postseason. LeBron has done the impossible. If anybody can do it, he can do it, so we can't count him out. The Lakers went 6-12 and 12 during LeBron's absence. He's healthy again now. But even so, the numbers say playoff LeBron will likely take a one-year hiatus. And Jalen is here. We're getting ready for Get Up in about 24 minutes, where we will get deeply into this. But I call you Rose Stradamus because you always <laughs> see the future. So predict the future for me. What can LeBron do in this final third of the season to get the Lakers in the playoffs? Well, LeBron has to be fantastic. He has to be amazing. He has to be scoring 30-plus points. He has to be efficient from the floor. The assists have to be there. The rebounds have to be there. The leadership has to be there. I have a lot of faith, as I said, in the entire season in Kyle Kuzma, who won the Rising Stars MVP. He's been terrific all season. But the Western Conference is a lot different than the Eastern Conference, and I think fans are paying attention to that and understanding and seeing the Lakers below 500 heading into the All-Star break. You know, it's interesting because at Christmas, right before he got hurt, he got hurt on Christmas Day in that game, they were playing well. They were coming together. Everyone was talking about that. Do you believe now, looking at the Clippers, looking at the Kings, do you think LeBron's going to get in? The best thing that happened to the Lakers' playoff chances is that the Clippers don't want to make the playoffs. Right. So they traded their best player, Tobias Harris. The Sacramento Kings, they've improved. It will be a victory for them to actually make the playoffs. They may even have a parade. The Lakers, they would not celebrate making the playoffs, especially in the AC. You know why? That means you played against the Golden State Warriors in the first round. It means your postseason experience is going to be very short. Jalen <laughs> has the winners and losers at the NBA All-Star break as we get get up started in 23 minutes. Jay Williams is here counting it down to Carolina Duke. And Lewis Riddick on the very latest Steelers efforts to trade Antonio Brown. All that and more at the top of the hour here on ESPN. Right now, Nicole and Randy, back to you. Here's a show stop right off the off the top here. Kevin Durant in his 10th All-Star game wow. already. Wow. 10th All-Star game already. Durant, the drive and the slam. There were 34 dunks in the NBA All-Star game. If you're keeping track, and, and I hope you are. Durant went off in the fourth while you watch all of this Kevin Durant play. Team LeBron had a 3.2 chance of winning when they were down 118-99 with seven minutes left in the third quarter. It's the NBA All-Star game. Everybody makes a run. <laughs> Here in the fourth, under six. Sprint. Doing their thing. Kevin Durant just went off in the fourth quarter. 31 points overall, 10 of 15 shooting, 4 of 4 in the fourth quarter. Team LeBron is going to go on to win 178-164. Kevin Durant is the MVP of the game. It's his second. You might recall he won in 2012 as a member of the OKC Thunder. And Kevin Durant becomes the first Warrior to win the All-Star Game MVP since Rick Barry, 1967. I'd like to see Durant shoot some free throws under him. <laughs> Kevin Durant is the sixth player ever with multiple All-Star Game MVPs and Finals MVPs. Look at these names. LeBron, Michael, Shaq, Kobe, and Magic. Don't really need a last name among them. The 2019 NBA All-Star Game. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Giannis understands you want to get some buckets in an all-star game, start with dunks. Probably looking for that MVP early on, right? Curry with a high bounce. Oh, yes. Dirk Nowitzki here against what the crowd is. Nowitzki for your body may get old, but that jump shot will never get old. That's what I do, baby. Paul George here, hitting Harding with the Harding. Durant for Wade. Just Wade said it. Oh, you know when you have LeBron James, anything's possible in that basketball court. Welcome to how the rest of the league feels, Clay. Durant for three. Durant, oh, he's on fire. Team LeBron beat Team Giannis 178 to 164. Kevin Durant, he's your MVP for 2019. We 
Weekend Encore is brought to you by McDonald's. I'm from the bottom, and I'm living the dream, for real. Listen, I'm living from the bottom, I'm living the dream, I'm living the dream. So the NBA has swung and missed on multiple super-hyped international prospects having seen top five picks dating back to the early 2000s flop. Enter Mavs rookie Slovenian-born Luka Doncic. He's already made a huge impact on Dallas and beyond. Not yet 20 years old and averaging over 20 points per game, he's electrifying arenas. Luka's ceiling had been called into question. Now it's the sky. Doncic sat down with Rachel Nichols to talk everything. From new teammate Kristaps Porzingis to his own transition. Look at that shit is magic. Look at driving and he throws it down. The step back three. Oh yeah! Never seen a guy so under control with the rock. That dude good. He gonna be a problem. He already a problem. What has it been like for you so far this year? What have been the most fun parts? Just playing the games, playing against all those superstars, you know, just facing against them and trying to beat them. LeBron, a cut for the weak side, Luka blocked it twice! Very alertly guarding LeBron James underneath. Has it been a particular game or person or something that's been fun for you to do? I would say LeBron, you know, everybody else. I always looked up for LeBron, so he was my idol. You've had experience going to a new country before. You went to Spain at age 13, having never lived there and not knowing the language. How did that help you get ready for going to the NBA and living here? Oh, it was a lot easier this way, you know. When I was 18, I mean 19, moved to the States, it was way easier than I was when I was 13 to move to Spain. So I was kind of ready for it. Brings it down towards a minute to play in the first quarter. Oh, a step up from the baseline. You have so much style on the court. You have great flair. Where did that come from? I don't know, I would just say I, was, I play like this all the time, you know, since I was young, so I, I would say just, I just play like that. How do you notice the crowd reacting to you? Uh, I like it pretty much, especially when we go to the away games. And yeah. I see when I get introduced, somebody, some people cheering for me, and it's kind of... It's kind of special. I hear that when you are going to Miami, there's going to be a crazy Slovenian crowd between you and Goran there. What do you What do you expect that, is going to come out of there? That's going to be fun. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of fun. Got it. There it is. is. Corner, Luca. Oh! Oh, How did he do it? How did he do it? The guys that I work with, the former players like Scottie Pippen or Tracy McGrady, they say that it's very obvious when they watch you that you want the pressure of that last shot, but you want to be the one that it all depends yeah, on and you're not scared sure. of it. No, <laughs> for sure I want to be. Can you take yeah. me through what goes through your mind as the clock is going down and it's a close game? I just I just feel confident, you know. I, I know I have the confidence of my teammates, on my team, so I just feel confident with myself and I love taking those shots. I get motivated when the you know, <laughs> I have to make the last shot, so I like it. The club with the greatest European player of all time lands the greatest European player of our time. This is perfect. What about Dirk? What has it been like playing with him? Oh, amazing. You know, he's just amazing. He's an all-time great player. And just off the court, he's a normal person. So that's what means a lot. He's pretty goofy. Yeah. Is that something that you knew about him before? Yeah, yeah he's funny. You he's, hung out with he's him? He's funny. He make, yeah. <laughs> he makes jokes. Sometimes they're terrible, but he's funny. <laughs> What about Chris Depp's Porzingis? What have you uh, contacted you have with him so far? Well, I know him from before, but now we hang out more, so I know him better now. We, I think this, this is going to be something special for sure. Speaking of special, to see more of Doncic's season, take an unprecedented all-access look at everything that goes into being an NBA rookie on and off the court. NBA Year One, available now. Where else but on ESPN+. Plus.